Hey there, and welcome to the next episode of Docs Who Lift podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Spencer Adelsky, and I got my co-host, partner in crime, Dr. Carl Adelsky Jr. This episode, we are going to be talking about the idea of obesity as a disease. So take it away, Dr. Carl. What does it mean for obesity to be a disease as opposed to anything else? Well, so let's let's first start off and talk about the definition of disease. So once upon a time, uh, 1998 or so, it was thought that obesity was described as a complex multifactorial condition, keyword, characterized by excess body fat. Well, over time, I mean, a lot of people have been researching this. We're not the researchers. We're the clinical experts that are trying to, you know, pass this on to patients. But because, you know, there's a lot of semantics and debate and issues like that around the term disease and medicalizing things, I think that's where this, you know, there, there's a problem. And this will lead us to ultimately discussing bias and stigma. But criteria for a disease in all basic sense is that it causes impairment of normal functioning, there are characteristic signs or symptoms, and uh, causes harm or morbidity. So by definition, excess adiposity, fat tissue, now we know that it's maybe the largest endocrine organ in the body that meets the criteria for a disease. So professional medical organizations over the past you know, 10 years or so have come around to declaring it, just by definition, a disease process. And if we want to talk about what I think is, is kind of the perfect uh, terminology uh, for the definition of obesity, uh, it comes from the, the world... Obesity Federation, George Bray, basically describing it as uh, a chronic relapsing disease described with by excess or abnormally distributed functioning adipose tissue that causes harm. So by definition, that is what obesity been in is. These debates for I don't know. It's now it's been ten years because of our social media presence and kind of getting into this fitness world. You know, we, our intro. That was our first episode of kind of how, why we're the docs who lift, we're into fitness, we're into lifting weights, but we're also physicians who look at this from a, a fitness lens, but there's a lot of people that are in the fitness world who do not believe it's a disease. There's multiple things out there, and we'll kind of go over them in this podcast, but one of the things is that, well, but when we gain fat, that's supposed to happen, adipose, adipogenesis, uh, that's supposed to happen. So why is that a disease then? What would you say? Well, so yeah, we all we need adipose tissue. There are, you know, in simple terms, healthy fat. Uh, when we start storing fat in places where it shouldn't be really that drive, you know, metabolic disease or when the amount of fat is so much that it's causing other problems. And this will get us to talking about sort of that cardiometabolic disease state versus some of the biomechanical things like uh arthritis yeah. even and so it's when it causes harm that's really the most sort of definitive way it's truly a disease process but also the complex nature of energy balance and how we store adiposity and how our energy balances is, is controlled and then of course all the different variables of different people at what point do we stop storing healthy fat and when does it start going where we don't want it that we'll get to later uh, essentially abdominal fat, or we call it ectopic fat, where it's not supposed to be. The liver, the muscle, the pancreas, all that the stuff, heart. high inflammation, yeah. disease in the heart. And those are the things that we really care about. Yeah. I think another good aspect about this is, like you said, a chronic uh, remitting, relapsing type of uh, disease yeah. process. Is This is what people don't mention when they talk about, hey, well, the fat's supposed to be there. When we eat too much, uh, too many calories, more calories than we burn, we, we have to have a place to store it. And like my brother said, but then we start storing it in, in, in places that's not supposed to be there. And then it really starts causing that cardiometabolic harm. But one of the other issues is though, when we try to treat it, when we try to help people fix the underlying issue, which is eating fewer calories, the body fights back. And it makes it extremely difficult to then uh, take that weight off and keep it off. It just keeps coming back. The body fights to try to keep it on. We will have more info on that process, but that's another component of it. 
what about this component? This is such a, this is the stupidest one, but I hear this all the time. Well, it's not like you can catch obesity. Why, why would that be a disease? When I, I have my answer, but go ahead and say why that's well, ridiculous. Yeah, that, that's interesting. I mean, I guess that's people maybe just don't understand the definition of disease right. because that's just talking about what we call communicable yeah. diseases, where it's like COVID-19, yeah. you can catch the virus and that causes right. harm. Uh, there are plenty of other ways to have chronic disease or even acute disease. Right. So communicable, um, just based on communicable definition. versus non-communicable, like what, type 2 diabetes, is that a disease process? You don't catch it from somebody. So that doesn't make any sense. Uh, we talk about syphilis, you know, whatever, any bacteria, virus, uh, any type of uh, parasites. We, we have different diseases caused by different things you can you can catch. So that's that's ridiculous. Thing. But I see that one come up and I'm like, no, you're just confusing communicable versus non-communicable diseases. And we have lots of non-communicable diseases. Obesity would fall under non-communicable. What are the other ones that we hear? We hear... Um, uh, well, people people say, well, it's a lifestyle choice. Yes, that's the one. And things like that. Which is, and, and that goes back to the complex nature of our biology that works against people. And everybody's different, but we know it's a complex, again, relapsing, progressive disease well, process. And choice and, has nothing to do and with it. And evolution has put us at risk of it. And uh, yeah, there are certainly some lifestyle choices we need to do better with a lot of times. Um, but it's easier said than done. And it, when you say that to patients, they all know it. They're like, yeah, I know. And then we can educate. Right. But, you know, it, the obesity, the disease itself is not a lifestyle choice. Right. And it's not all about willpower and all these things. The biology is powerful. Let's, let's, say it, what, let's say it was a choice. I'm not saying it is. But let's say it was a choice. What does that matter? That has nothing to do with whether it's a disease or not. But Here's Technically, yeah. A lot of people make choices that, that yeah. result in severe disease and harm that – that are still diseases and harmful. Right. So let, here's a here's a you know a, a, here's an example. It's a bit extreme, and it might seem a little ridiculous. Let's say you you someone uh, that you're uh, attracted to has uh, herpes, and you know <laughs> yeah. they have herpes, and this happens. I mean, you know, you're dating yeah. somebody or, you know, or gonorrhea. Yeah, gonorrhea. Yeah, herpes, you usually don't know that one, but I mean, <laughs> herpes is for you for life. So you know they have herpes. You choose to have intercourse or whatever uh, sexual relations with that person. You choose to do it and you contract it and you make that choice. So does that mean that it's what you have now is not a disease? No, it's, it has, so choice has nothing to do whether it's a disease, right. disease or not. Now we will say we'll probably have another episode on whether obesity is a choice or not. It's, it's, it's actually a ridiculous rhetorical super complex question because we do make choices of what we eat every single day but it's not as simple as having a uh, complete free will to, to anyway that's a whole nother right. discussion we've probably well, actually, going, going back to the communicable disease example you just said we're not going to dive into any you know i don't think too controversial things but um you know this is uh, obviously coming up right now there are people who are making choices to protect themselves or not in in some ways from certain viruses, right? Um, and uh, you know, what, we still treat the disease if it happens. Yeah, it's, it's just yeah. because it's a. And a so does bad, it, you know, there it doesn't make it any choices we can more make. or less of a disease, just whether based on your choices that you make. Here's the here's the example we we would um, make analogies to, similar to hypertension, similar to type two diabetes. Uh, obesity is on this kind of spectrum that's is related to lifestyle. And also genetics, mind you. There will be a lot of people that, despite their best efforts, will develop hypertension, high blood pressure, and maybe even type 2 diabetes. And cardiovascular disease is probably even a, a really good one, too. Now, despite that, does that, does that make those any less of, of a disease state? No. And the other thing that it's analogous to, or why it's analogous to those, is that these are kind of chronic conditions. So people are like, but it's a choice. It's, it's, it's all based on lifestyle. Well, so are these other disease states. If somebody with hypertension develops hypertension and you try, they try their best with lifestyle and they uh, aren't doing it and you, you, you give them a drug, right? When, they, when their blood pressure comes down, you know, do you, do you stop the drug? Usually not. You, you usually keep them on the drug. Well, with obesity, and this is something that we'll get into when it comes to talking about a whole episode on obesity medicine, people think that we shouldn't even treat it. 
uh, with any type of medicine because it's just a choice and they just need to eat less. So this is something. Well, we here, here's back in, in addition to your, to your analogy there, I would argue that most of those diseases you just described, while they have complex genetic backgrounds and some of them have very specific genetic tar you know, causes and, and other targets, most of them are what I would call obesity driven diseases yeah. or adiposity based diseases. Right. It doesn't that you don't have to have a huge BMI. We're going to circle back to this in a little bit, yeah. but high blood pressure, insulin resistance, type two diabetes, the, the, that dysglycemic, that bad sugar spectrum, um, and, uh, you know, cardiometabolic disease, risk of cardiovascular disease. Those are adiposity based chronic diseases, complications of the disease of obesity. Yeah. And so they're all within that potential spectrum. Um, and, uh, yeah, so lifestyle is the frontline therapy, yeah. but I think, we still have you to know, treat it. My, brother, my brother's good with, with his friends with some of these uh, researchers who are maybe trying to rename obesity, um, the disease of obesity, because there will be some other people in certain communities that will say, yeah, but not all obesity is as harmful mm -hmm as others for example i know somebody that has a bmi they're 300 or whatever however many pounds 400 pounds and they don't have type 2 diabetes uh, and they seem to be living well and it's true that we have different what we call phenotypes of where we store the fat my brother talks about this but whether you're storing it on your hips and your legs and you're able to expand that subcutaneous fat the stuff that you can kind of pinch versus whether it stops expanding and it starts being deposited in our different organs where it really starts wreaking havoc on our uh, on all our cardiometabolic systems our lipids our blood pressure and everything else so why would it be why could we call it a disease in in one person versus another person should we base it only on anthropometric measures meaning like bmi or even waist circumference and, and weight or should we start looking beyond this and looking at it a more clinical picture what would you say yeah well, yeah, that gets right to um, some of the major points that, that we're all working on right now to how do we better explain obesity as a disease process and uh, reduce the vicious cycle of obesity stigma, bias, and that issue with calling it a disease and, and diagnosing it as such. So you can have low muscle mass and store most of your adipose tissue where we don't want it that drives cardiometabolic disease, and that would be this term adiposity-based chronic disease, even if your BMI is not elevated. The problem with obesity is that historically, it's been measured, classified, and even inappropriately diagnosed based upon BMI only because BMI is pretty darn good at a population level for estimating the amount of adipose tissue we have and correlating that with disease. But everybody's different. There's a lot of inter-individual variability. So like you said, some people do a great job of storing it and they don't develop that cardiometabolic disease. They might have biomechanical disease though, and that counts as complications of, of obesity for sure. But at any BMI, depending on your genetics and other factors, you can be developing severe uh, adiposity-based chronic disease, disease complications of obesity. And so we really have to get away from the BMI, the weight, the numbers on the scale, and start thinking about this uh, in a more clinical manner. What's on the inside is what counts. And so what are the risks of those harms? What are the harms themselves? And really that ultimately, when we talk about other therapies, that's what should dictate how intense we are with our uh, efforts from lifestyle through medicine and surgery and all that stuff. Yeah. I, uh, someone was arguing with me on my Facebook. I'm, I'm always arguing with people on the internet, but um, I That's posted about how, you know, Carl. You get paid the big bucks. You can lose, you, what's that? I said, That's why you get paid the big bucks. Yeah, I get paid the big bucks for arguing with people. You, there's some, I, I posted about how you can eat carbohydrates and still lose fat despite spiking your insulin uh, acutely from eating carbohydrates. And someone said, No, but there are people that are lean that have a BMI of below 25 mm -hmm. that have type 2 diabetes and it's like I had to explain well you know some people have different what we call personal thresholds of how much fat they can store before it starts yeah. causing problems so as my brother said somebody could be very under muscled and have very low muscle so their, their body weight's low and they start gaining more and more fat and they technically have 
according to a BMI, uh, they're lean. And that's what the studies would show. This person, they would say this person's lean. But if you looked probably to the well, DEXA scan I'll, I'll, or an MRI, you yeah. know, we could probably know the yeah. differences. And, and I'll give you an anecdote to this. Um, in, in talking about some of these things, I was recently working on some upcoming uh, fatty liver guidelines. And, you know, we're debating, we're trying to come up with a consensus, very evidence-based recommendations, but we still have to come up with a consensus on how to promote this and educate people. And we were debate having this exact debate with the liver experts on, you know, obesity at, at BMI and all that stuff. And they said, well, but, but what about the people who are lean? They don't need to lose weight. And I said, no, no, by definition, fatty, if it's, if it's non-alcoholic fatty liver, that's driven by adipose tissue in the liver like these other obesity related complications, then it by definition is an adiposity based chronic disease. They just don't have an elevated BMI. They're not lean, their liver right. has fat in it by definition. And so um, another example, you know, uh, if you look at just mainstream guidelines, ADA, we start screening uh, people uh, from certain Asian ethnicities at lower BMIs for type two diabetes. 20, a BMI of 23 is considered overweight. Yep. Because they store in general, this is these are generalizations because we have to pick up, you know, it's population health a little bit, and we we need to screen them for diabetes at lower uh, BMIs because it's not just about BMI; it's about their individual adiposity and the harm it's causing. Now there are other causes of of diabetes, so there are also misdiagnoses, mind right. you. Right there are different uh, monogenic causes of diabetes. Obviously, there's type one diabetes, so there's certainly more to it, which is why. You know, we also require very holistic evaluations and considerations for any individual. Yeah, no, I, I mean, that's that's where it comes down to a clinical, a real good clinical diagnosis. We'll probably do a podcast all about the BMI at some point yeah. and how that's uh, a little bit controversial. In yeah. some our, our BMIs are elevated despite low body fat and, and car good cardiometabolic health, I think. Regarding <laughs> that person that's uh, under-muscled despite having a, a low BMI and fatty liver, that's where we'd be like, docs who lift, maybe we should start promoting lifting weights. Absolutely. Put some muscle. Very important. Yes, absolutely first line. Dietary quality, weight training, very important for that person, regardless of maybe the energy balance issue. Here, here's a question for you. What's the point of even calling it a disease? Like this is where people are like, what, why do you even have to yeah. call it a disease? Like that's just, it, it, it may that, cause people to feel like they're uh, helpless, uh, hopeless, that they, they think, that, there's some studies around this, whether it does or no, doesn't, you know, yeah. I, I don't know. But uh, what would you say to those types of people? Yeah, that, I mean, and that's a tough, you know, I think that's up for, you know, discussion. Why do we call anything a disease then? Yeah. Um, I think there are reasons beyond maybe our level of expertise, actually, that have to do with uh, coverage. Nothing of, above of our treatment. Let's just be honest. <laughs> so the coverage of therapy for disease. Yeah, yeah we know everything, right? Um, therapies for disease, coverage. Yeah. Um, and, you know, again, not to be political at all, but it does tend to drive policy yeah. you know there are government policies yeah. and things like that and and i think i would argue that most people are more maybe accepting and acknowledging their own obesity as a as a difficult disease disease to deal with and they actually feel better that um you know they i don't think they feel helpless in my experience it, that's it anecdotal I, I don't know the data are mixed but it depends on how you frame it and i don't necessarily tell patients yeah. you have a disease it's called obesity i right I describe it You're as, right. look, you've tried everything, and it's because there's a biological driver. I don't have to even say it's a disease, yeah. but I, I do think... Right. I, you're right. They, the, the, the patients don't even necessarily care that much. They know if you describe it as a complex disease that's hard to deal with, or you don't even have to say disease, yeah. but a, you know the, the diseases that come from it. I don't they, even have they to say acknowledge and, and, like, Right. Yeah, I know. Like, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I, I, and I often use the term weight. Yeah, and uh, and yeah, and we could debate that, and there are different you know studies on whether that's better or not. But we'll um, have an episode you know, I think look, it, it's hard. It is. Yeah, it's, it's, hard. it's it's easier said than done, and and they embrace that, and they say, okay, wow, and I said, now let's find a way to help you. There, there, we we've gotten in arguments like, why call it a d disease? And then you know, when we say it, it's like, well, it comes down to funding. Can we get more treatments for it? And then it's like, well, then that's it's thought that there's this conspiracy of big pharma and big government are getting together. And you know, okay, is it possible there's something there? Yeah, there's money involved. But I will say, I will say when we get into our podcast of how to treat, how to actually treat obesity 
uh, from this mindset of treating it like a disease and we talk about medicines and surgeries and all this type of stuff. I would say I'm th I am very thankful for, especially as a clinician, for my patients to have these different therapies to, to, to moving on to this idea of it being a disease and treating it as such. Because I think we just haven't been good at it in the past other than uh, maybe surgery yeah. in the past. But. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, and I think it gives us a framework for, for helping patients and, and other clinicians too when we get into, you know, maybe we'll talk about, you know, the diagnosis and staging later rather than just obesity as a disease. But right. it helps us going back to the whole BMI versus the, you know, what actually matters. You know, I say it's what's on the inside that counts to patients. And we should stage the severity of the disease based upon what risk they have of other chronic complications or what already complications they have. And so, you know, going back to our American Association of Clinical Endocrinology that I'm involved with, you know, we, we stage it zero, one, and two. Uh, do you have zero complications and you're truly, truly healthy, but will you have excess adipose tissue that puts you at risk of some of those diseases? Okay. Do you have mild disease? That's still something we need to address a little bit more aggressively. Or do you have pretty severe disease like type 2 diabetes, you know, all the components of metabolic syndrome, severe sleep apnea, severe knee arthritis, those things uh, are need to be treated more urgently and uh, with more intensity. And, and so it helps us in that regard. Forget the BMI. You, like you said, you can have a BMI of uh, 57 and have no complications, probably unlikely, right. <laughs> but, unlikely, um, but right. you certainly are at high risk of problems and should be treated, but you can have a, a BMI of 23 with the right genetic milieu and, uh, and have some severe disease. It doesn't mean you have to lose 100 pounds. It means you have to treat the disease process. Yeah, so yeah, just before we end here, I think about a patient, you know, let's say a 40-year-old um, uh, woman who has a BMI of, let's say, just around 30, but absolutely, they're, they're running marathons, they feel great, there's no knee pain, no blood sugar, issue, everything's perfect. And I do mm -hmm. get these patients, and, you yeah. know, they just... They do want to trim down. Okay, fine. Uh, according to BMI, they would have obesity, just BMI. But they would, very low staging. They did like, I don't know. I, I don't know yeah, if you well, keep up your habits. So that person would be a stage zero. Yeah. But I would also argue yeah. that that person is treating her obesity. Right. With, so she has excess yeah, adiposity yeah. at risk. She is treating it with pretty intensive lifestyle yeah. therapy. She's maintaining her weight and not developing the complications of obesity. So I'd argue she is treating her obesity already, even yeah. though we're going to talk about that, <laughs> fine tuning it. Whatever self medicate. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, but so then, so then you got to, let's contrast that to somebody, you know, let's say if, if another 40 year old woman, um, who has a 26 or 27 BMI, but has type two diabetes, uh, not probably has an elevated waist disease. circumference because she's holding it in her ab, you yeah. know, that she's so, storing it abdominally. Quite, quite different, quite different um, scenarios there. So uh, anyway, that's, that's a point. The, the whole po point of this podcast is describing this idea of obesity as a disease. We don't, we, it's, it's very important to set up our future podcast where we talk a little bit more about obesity stigma and maybe we'll get into more of clinically how we would treat some of these different stages um, and, and then also it sets up, you know, the discussion of medication versus surgery, how intense we need to uh, be treating. And then we'll go into, we'll go and have podcasts all about like specific obesity related mm -hmm. conditions and how to maybe, uh, yeah. uh, optimize treatment there. But anything else, Dr. Carl? Yeah. I think that's right. I think, uh, you know, the other thing we'll talk about is maybe a little bit more detail into the complexities of the energy balance system that works against us that we keep referring to. Right. Um, sometimes people like to hear like the, the more nerdy nuances of that. Um, you know, I had a mentor once uh, in endocrinology who said, embrace the complexity, but act with simplicity. So we have to try to balance this out for people. Some people like to hear all the complexities. Some people just want the simple answers, but um, we'll try to give both. All right. Very good. That's it for a docs who lift podcast all about obesity as a disease till next time.